A lot of you guys are getting into business that you know nothing about. You're putting your money into it and then you're wondering why the money's disappearing. You know, that's just greed. I almost got caught in it and I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It happens to everyone. I think when shit gets real, that's when I take the sunglasses off. Oh, yeah? Me. What do you think? There will be that moment in every yeah. podcast yeah, where I you're know, like, where oh, shit. Be... <laughs> All right. <laughs> shit just got real. <laughs> <laughs> you hold on to these, buddy. <laughs> I'm about we're, to go in. We're about to have a talk. <laughs> Here. <laughs> what the? That's good. I like uh, that. Uh, we should do that. Yeah. I'm not going to go into this battle with my sunglasses. I'm not into this one. This one's going to get dirty. This one's going to get rough. All right. So, yes, we have Mel coming in. We do. How long have you known Mel? Long time. Really? Yeah. Like what? Like 10 years? Yeah, at least. Maybe, at least. Maybe longer. Eh? Wow. And he was he bought his house with me. Oh yeah, he told yeah. me this. That corner unit. Yeah. That's awesome. Right. Wow. I know. And it was very spontaneous. No. I convinced him to buy three tanning salons with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mel buying tanning. Three t- <laughs> You what? have got to be fucking kidding me right now. Well, when we looked what? at the numbers, they were yeah. pretty fantastic. Yeah. The three tanning salons mm-hmm. were bringing in close to half a mil. Okay. To six hundred thousand dollars net a year, so wow. two hundred plus k each. And I told Mel, you know, I'm gonna sell my house, my first house that I still haven't sold. Wow! Like I told him, I'm gonna sell my house. Yeah. And take those proceeds. You take your proceeds, and yeah. let's let's tan the shit out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> and, the sh- and we got the pipe papers ready, and we got everything done. We signed everything up. I think we were gonna pay this guy. I don't know, something like a mil or something like that. Oh, okay. Maybe one point two. I yeah. don't know. Because tanning salons basically go for whatever your net is. That's sort of what the value is. So one year's worth. Pretty much. Got plus it. plus whatever assets there are in the company. So then you oh, buy the assets like the tanning salons and everything else. Gotcha. All the equipment inside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it's not the stock market where you're getting 10 times yeah, the value. Yeah, yeah. The only yeah. time you're going to get three <laughs> times or four times in the real world, in the retail world, is if it's a franchise, like a Subway. Mm. I think a Subway was getting up to somewhere around five times wow. its net. It's annual net. Net. Yeah. Wow. But it has to be net. Okay. And you got to realize, you know, a lot of businesses are not able to ever sell their businesses because they don't show their numbers. They're net. Yeah. Yeah. They always, whatever's cash, they sort of put it in exactly. their pocket. And then they wonder why they can't go out and buy real estate, why they can't go out and get loans. Against the business. Yeah. Against the business yeah. because, you know, they're, <laughs> they're just. not making any money. <laughs> they're not showing any money <laughs> yeah. on the bills, right? Yeah. And then when you go to sell it, you know, all of a sudden they're saying, well, okay, you're saying you're making what? Two, three hundred thousand. Mm-hmm net but on your books you're showing a negative bank <laughs> to CRA like how does that work well I'm making all this cash yeah I'm what making all the that? cash <laughs> right and you know I'm just writing off a few extra things here exactly. and there and I go well yeah I can't sell that shit nor do I want to because I'm not interested right because the same question is going to come up well I'll prove it well I'll prove it well I'll prove it well I'll prove it right right and I'm like yeah you know thank you but no thank you so if I take on a business to sell the business you got to show your numbers you show your numbers right 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 then you're not relying on me to come up with a presentation that may or may not be real mm. and anyways with the tanning salon then Mel yeah did he do it <laughs> So I remember going to his house, got everything signed, yeah. and I said, Mel, I'm on my way, get the check, let's go to the bank, let's get the check ready. Yeah. And we're driving to the bank, and Mel starts hyperventilating. Was he <laughs> hyperventilating? You've got to be He starts hyperventilating. Hunt, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't, I can't do but it, But the numbers Hunt. were real. I what was this, what was this Hunt, hesitation? Hunt, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's I okay. I can't do it. I can't wait for him to come in. <laughs> I'm going I'm to buy a house, Hunt. I'm going to buy a house. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I, 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 I'm just, I can't, I can't take this risk. Right. I'm going to go out and buy a house. Yeah. And so he was hyperventilating. And I think basically three weeks later, we bought the house that he still lives in today. Yeah. Yeah. And so, because he was hesitating with the house, hesitating with the house, hesitating with the house. Mm-hmm. And then finally this got him to buy the house. So oh. you may think of it just as a technique I use. Yeah. But it really wasn't actually. Did no. you end up buying? No. Oh, no, okay, God, okay. no. I sold all three. Oh, you did? Yeah. I sold all three, <laughs> you know, wow. and, and it worked out really well for me. 
me actually because I double ended every single one. Wow. And, and because I was so, I really sold because I was willing to buy it. I was really selling. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. You were about to make the purchase. Yeah, I sat outside <laughs> that door. I yeah. did the counts, everything yeah, yeah, yeah. just to see if it was real or not. And I exactly. sold all three. I wouldn't do it again. I'm not into the retail business. Yeah. these smaller ones. It's not worth my time at the day. Mm -hmm. A lot of lawyer stuff that you got to go back. All of a sudden you have to negotiate with lawyers. Mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden people want to back out of the deal. I talk commercial guy. He goes, listen, Hans, 50% of them don't close. Wow. They don't close. You do the deal. Yeah. And yeah. They don't close. Right. Or, you know, they somehow get to know who they are each other from the visits and all of a sudden, poof, they do a deal behind your back. They don't have to pay the commission because at the end of the day, you have a fixed commission on these lower priced ones, the of 100, course. 200,000, 300,000 dollar businesses. Yeah. And it's a fixed commission, five, ten thousand dollars And then, you know, at the end of the day, when everything's done, done, all of a sudden sellers, you know, only making a hundred G's or, yeah, yeah. or sometimes even less 50 G's. Wow. And now, you know, the real estate agents taking 20, 30% of that. Right. And so they do a back deal. Oh, to right. avoid paying that extra. To avoid paying the extra, even though the real estate agent's the ones that brought them together. Exactly. It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. universal law says that's just going to, that person is just going to get hammered tenfold. But in those states, when their business is not going well, mm. uh, which is a painful state, they don't really seem to care. True. So anyways, uh, Mel ended up backing out of that business. Thank yeah. And you know what? Thank God he did. Yeah. It was a blessing because if he didn't, me and him might have been in the tanning salon business. And not, <laughs> and not here. And not just that. The <laughs> next year, the tanning salon on business went from I think it's a rating of two yeah, yeah. in the second division to the number one one of the top causes as a carcinogenic oh no for cancer causing so there this guy sort business. of knew it must knew it was coming along I had no clue that's why I was cashing out probably he's saying he wasn't aware of it but I don't know like and I'm not gonna say anything because I had no clue I'm not in the tanning business yeah, yeah. nor would I know if those laws were changing and so unfortunately but had you done it huh? it, it would have affected you <laughs> oh big yeah big time yeah, yeah. that would have been a you would have been the same yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, and then that guy started getting into another business, spray tanning. Oh God! Yeah, the spray now tanning business. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And then I don't know if that worked. And he sort of nice wow. guy, nice guy. His name was Vince. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So he was in business for like fifteen years, I guess, so or ten he knew years. The industry. He built up a pretty good brand. He had multiple locations, and and he just decided, okay, I want out. And maybe he got lucky at when he got out, or maybe he timed it. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. So Mel didn't do that. Buys his first house. Buys his first house. Yeah. Everything that you're going through. I mean, you know, it was a lot is a lot of changes and it's very <laughs> excited that i went yeah. through a lot of changes i mean i'm a guy that comes from secondhand clothing mm -hmm. right i went into the salvation armies i saw the ripped jeans i thought they were stylish so i didn't care i know my dad was always buying the patches we went into the i forget what the name of the secondhand clothings were but we went into them we bought i just thought it was normal right. i did not know as a kid that you know 99% or 95% of the other people were buying it at regular stores brand new. Your H&M's, yeah. your, your malls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the fuck would I know? That's crazy. Yeah. You just thought it was normal. Yeah. So do you get goosebumps every time like you drive by it or whatnot nowadays? Uh, if I drive by my old neighborhood yeah. I, of where I came from, the apartment building, that kind of stuff, I look at it and I go, sometimes I go, wow, yeah, it's a bit of a wow factor. Right? Yeah, I don't drive yeah. by too far because it's not too close to me. Right, right, right. That's uh, further south. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely go, wow, especially from where I am now today mm -hmm. and where I was. Unreal. Yeah. Probably just like the craziest feelings going through your mind when you're there and seeing it. Probably well, just yeah, it just back. reminds you quickly about, you know, how far you've come because sometimes you forget about that. Right. Or you're not paying attention to it. And sometimes, and not sometimes, you need to be grateful on a regular basis. And if you can remind yourself of where you came from and how far you've gone, you might not because a lot of people tend to get angry that they're not succeeding at the pace they want to succeed or they're not getting they're succeeding but they're not succeeding as much as they want to succeed in that short period of time or they can't handle the ups and downs right they just think life is just supposed to be a skyrocket rocket ship into outer space or something mm -hmm. with no ups and downs well go look at the stock market chart and tell me that there's no ups and downs in the world there, every business is going through ups and downs exactly and everybody's lives are going through ups and downs so everybody for me <laughs> you know sometimes you can go through a down and i think if you go back and realize how far you've actually come then you'll realize yeah i was here mm -hmm. underneath there somewhere underneath and, the you, know, now floor. I'm, you know i'm pretty much up there right? yeah yeah you know so exactly it's a blessing mm -hmm. it's definitely something you got to be grateful and thankful for on a regular basis mm -hmm. and while you're being grateful you can still say hey but i got more to give right i got more to grow i want to see what i can do i'm not dead yet right so <laughs> let me go higher 
do well let's see what i can do next level right? yeah yeah let's go to the next level yeah right that's what it's a lot of it's about all the time mm -hmm. okay i made it here let's what's what's next what's right next for you yeah yeah and so everyone goes through this it's just normal process mm -hmm. the human nature mm -hmm. seeing how far you can grow i mean the trees are doing it we talked about that recently yeah right? we did the trees are, are competing with each other for the sunlight right the little ones that are growing and they they're willing to shade out and kill the little ones yeah right so they can get to grow you know 100 150 feet i got some huge trees in my backyard it's crazy yeah. how tall they are yeah yeah and they're all fighting for that sunlight so how does that remind me so what what do the baby trees do then what do they do yeah they die right because yeah. of all the shade yeah you're a baby tree how do you grow you you wait for one of the old ones just to get knocked over by wind for example yeah. you wait or they just get old and die and then all of a sudden there's a little opening now you grow now that baby tree has sunlight hitting it and no one's no obviously no other trees are going to quickly come in and shade it no no they no. might try but got an opportunity now there's a few trees that are all going to spurt up in that area and the fastest one who gets to the top sort of gains control of that sort of like you know new businesses that come out yeah right yeah yeah, yeah. Tax, whatever it is exactly they're all everyone comes out everyone starts racing yeah, yeah, and yeah all of a sudden you know the ones that don't get to that top level or haven't produced the right system or the right branches Strategy. or strategies yeah yeah they all collapse mm -hmm. right so what happens so the the tanning thing goes out you buy that house for him yeah you yeah, bought yeah. it for him yeah well he bought his first house, house with me when That's i was crazy. out doing showings and that kind of stuff right and An he agent. bought it for 390 400 thousand we negotiated down on the on a 395 or yeah, something yeah. like that thousand first house was he married yeah he was yeah, married yeah. and he had his first kid by oh then, right? okay, okay yeah yeah and they were living at home right right trying to save up money mm -hmm. to buy their first house so he ended up doing it after he got a heart attack about putting all that money into <laughs> some risky business Damn, that we knew <laughs> nothing about <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> a lot of you guys are getting into business that you know nothing about. You're putting your money into it, and then you're wondering why the money's disappearing. You know, that's just greed. I almost got caught in it, and I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It happens to everyone. Mm -hmm. I almost got caught in it. I just looked at these numbers, and I go, how hard can it be? <laughs> I had no no clue yeah. about the business, no idea what it was going to do, no idea how to run it. So what got you in? The numbers? Like it sounded Pure great. greed. Stats. Yeah. Just <laughs> the thought process of making 600, 700, 800 profits probably being able to run the business better than this guy definitely pure greed at that point in time wow and i almost got myself into something that would have just shot me in the foot and i would not be sitting here today if that happened there would wow. be no real estate mentor here today if that happened and that's <laughs> the tanning you know, mentor yeah <laughs> the spray tan <laughs> Maybe you would see my face on a can. Yeah, I'd see that happening. Yeah, probably. You would have just taken over that industry. It would have been great. Who knows? <laughs> I guess he took the leap of faith yeah. and bought the house. Yeah, he bought yeah. the house. Yeah. And uh, thank God he did. And he tripled in value since he's bought it. Yeah, yeah. So you go in for 400, it's more than tripled. It's almost uh, quadrupled in value. Since I would say quadruple. It. Yeah. Wow. Now he's doing a full renovation on it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, for him to get into real estate, I'm sitting there. Uh, we had a few drinks. It was one of these uh, nights at Mel's house type, nice. of, type of thing. And he hadn't gotten his real estate license yet. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was starting to catch on. I had just opened my brokerage. Nice. So I said to him, hey, you should get into real estate because obviously I opened a brokerage. I'm going to start trying to join up team members mm -hmm. and ge or just agents in general. Yeah. And his dad was there and we were all having a few glasses of wine just chilling having a good time i think we were probably playing poker that night or mm -hmm. whatever it was or maybe it was one of the kids birthday parties mm. and i go yeah well you got to get into real estate his dad goes yeah hans uh i don't think so hans he's got to think about his family he's got a deep bit of a deep voice right, especially right, when right, he's right, talking right. talking seriously he's got kids now hans he's got a mortgage he can't just up and quit his job right oh, and i had a few drinks yeah yeah so i go to him bam that's exactly why he has to quit his job because he's got kids he's got a family he's got a mortgage he's got a future and he's got to quit his job to be able to make sure he can give his family everything they deserve and that he wants right deserves the, yeah, everything yeah. that he deserves and if he stays where he is he's going to continue making his 60 g's on a single income with two kids a wife and a mortgage that's just yeah he's not well, that's just game over right? yeah, yeah yeah and had he done that the next Yo decade of his life would have been that right and where 
where would he be? He would have built his life around that. Well, that's it, yeah. And he would have kept going and going and going in those right. numbers. Maybe they grew a little bit. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, he wouldn't be sitting here in real estate uh, sharing the stories that he's about to share. Yeah, exactly. And he definitely wouldn't be, be able to, you know, renovate the whole house where he's doing right I now. I was going to say, yeah. He might have had to sell the house and even downsize yeah. it. Like a lot of people do mm -hmm. uh, when times get tough and you, you're earning a sixty, eighty thousand dollar $80,000 family, total family revenue, mm -hmm. right? So these are the things that we got to always think about, right? When we're making these moves, is it the right move? And are you being guided by the right person? Or, you know, is it someone who's going to help you actually move up levels? Or is it someone who's pulling you into something else that you're going to just collapse into? Mm. And it's not like he quit mm. overnight. Mel took two years wow. before part-time before he went full-time while well, he was at his job, other job for almost 20 years. Right. Doing or lighting, right? 25 years. He's doing uh, electrical. He was upgrading all the big buildings right. and all the sports facilities and all the universities oh, yes. with the new high efficiency lighting. So that's what their business, that's their contracts that he was getting. He was project managing. Nice. Yeah. Wow. And it was part-time real estate while doing that. He was doing part-time real estate. And so he did, I think in his first year, he did maybe about eight deals. I remember the first deal he did. So he was new. And so the new guys we send out to the worst open houses. Mm -hmm. and well, you know, you're lucky getting anything. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sent them out to the worst open houses. Yeah. He had to drive like an hour and yeah. a half to get out there. Yeah. Nobody showed up to these oh open houses. Oh, my God. Nobody, nobody, nobody showed up. And he kept going week after week <sighs> after week. This guy just kept going and going. Oh, my God. It's just a smile on his face. Didn't care. So what would he say he after you'd be like, hey, complained. how's the open house? Would he be like, shit? <laughs> no. He just said, no, nobody showed up, but I had a good conversation with the seller. Nice. Uh, the neighbor showed up so i went and chit chatted with him positive right yeah so he goes yeah you know i i, I did a good show it's all good it's good it's, namel never says negativity he's yeah one of the most positive people yeah. you ever meet i agree and uh, we consider him the heart of our team mm -hmm. the beating heart of our team and we love him on our team he's mm -hmm. just phenomenal leader now and he's a phenomenal partner i would even call him a partner in this business he's been here for almost a decade